Okay, for form, so we're coming to the end of uh, trigonometry. So our final lesson, I just want you to work through these five questions which are mixing up general trigonometry, so Sokotoa, the sine rule and cosine rule. So I'll, I'll make sure on show my homework I attach a PDF of these questions or of course you could just screenshot these here. Um, so uh, if you just want to work through these five questions, um, the answers follow. So I'm just about to go over question one. So uh, pause this video until you've done question one. So this is an example where we've got the three sides of a non-right angled triangle and we've got to um, work out the angle. So it's going to be the cosine rule, but the cosine rule when we've rearranged it. So remember, we're given the cosine rule here at the top, but you need to practice rearranging it to make cos A the subject. So what have we done? We've added 2BC cos A to both sides. We've taken away A squared from both sides, and then we've divided by 2BC. So, um, Okay, so I'm just about to go over question two. So, um, for, first of all, do a little sketch to, um, oh no, I think they gave you the sketch, didn't they? They gave you the little sketch. So we've got, um, we know that AB is 53 meters and BC is 72 meters. And we know that the area of the triangle ABC is 1090. We're being asked to find this angle here, this angle from um, A to B to C, A to B to C. So this is the angle they want us to find. So I've gone and um, relabeled it because the formula area equals area of a triangle is half A, B, sin C means that the angle that we want here, I want to call C. So that just makes sure that I pick up the appropriate sides, the A and the B, which clearly in this case I would because they are the only two sides that I've been given. So anyway, the area, which is 1090, equals half times A, which is 53, times B, which is 72, times sin of my unknown angle. So dividing both sides by half times 53 times 72, I get sin C equaling this. Popping that into my calculator and inverse sinning, I get the angle. Now, for B part one, I think a diagram helps you gather your thoughts. So we've got A to B being 53 meters, B to C being 72, but we're dropping down uh, a perpendicular down onto B to C because we're making AD, the length AD, as short as possible. Now, AD is going to be as short as possible when this is a right angle here. Okay, so we can basically solve this by way of Sokotoa. So we know this angle here is 34.8394 from part A. We know the hypotenuse is 53. So the length of the shortest length of fence required, this length from A to D, which I'm calling X, uh, is my unknown. So I want the opposite. I know the hypotenuse, so I'm going to use sin. So sin 34.8394 dot 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 equals my opposite x divided by my hypotenuse is 53. Multiply both sides by 53, and I get x being 30.277 dot dot dot, which is 30.3 meters to one decimal place. Now, for B part two, how far along BC from B will they meet? So we're trying to work out this length from B to D. So again, it's Sokotoa with this right angle triangle, and we're now work, wanting to work out the adjacent side. So a cos 34.8394 equals Y over 53, my adjacent over my hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by 53. I get Y equaling 53 cos 34.8 dot dot dot, which is 43.5. Then B part three, what is the area of the new enclosure? Well, this is just a right angle triangle that I want the area for. So half times base times height. So half times Y, which is 43.5 dot dot dot, times my height, which is X, which is 30.277 dot dot dot, which gives me 658.5 meters squared to one decimal place.
So I'm just about to go over question three. So for part A, uh, we're being asked to work out the length from A to C. Now looking at the right triangle AEC, we know this angle here is 50 and this length is 6.4 and we want to work out the hypotenuse AC. So we know the adjacent side, we want to work out the hypotenuse, so it's a right so part B, I've got to work out the length CE. So again, I'm using the right angle triangle AEC, and I now want to work out CE, uh, which is my opposite side. And I know the hypotenuse, so I could have used sin, but better to use tan because uh, and use my adjacent. So for part C, we've got to work out angle E to C to B. So that's this angle here that I'm calling X. So I'm using the right angle triangle E to B to C. Uh, I know the uh, hypotenuse is 8.5, that was given in the question. I've just worked out in part B that the length from E to C is 7.6272 dot dot dot. So I know my adjacent, I know my hypotenuse, so it's going to be a cosine question. So cos x equals 7.6272 dot 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 over 8.5. Now, part D, there's quite a bit going on here to work out the area of the whole quadrilateral. So I've broken it down into two triangles, this triangle here, AC, ACD, and then secondly, the triangle ABC. So starting off with the triangle ACD, well, this is not a right angle triangle. Um, I, don't, uh, I know this length is 9.3. Uh, I've worked out that the length AC is 9.9566, so I just need to work out this angle from A to C to D, this angle here. Now, I know that um, from the triangle AE to C that this angle here is 50, that's 90, so this angle here from A to C to E must be 40. Yes, I know the whole... So I'm just about to do question four. So where are we? Two, one, two, three, four. <coughs> okay, so um, for part A, they're giving you the diagram. So we know that this angle here is 28 degrees. They tell us that that's 15 degrees. And then when he's worked in, walked in, that angle is now 35. So we've got this 15 and these bits in blue. So, um, we can use the sine rule on the triangle ADB to work out the length X, okay, because we've got uh, a pair of angles, because if you work around the angles that we know, this is 35, so this angle here must be 145, angles in a straight line 180, so that's 145, that's 28, so that must be the rest to make it um, 180. So that's 180, take away 28, take away 145. So that angle there is 7. So we've got a pair. We know the 7 is the angle and the 15 is the side. So basically, if we call this length from B to D X, we can say that X over sin 28 equals 15 over sin 7. Then multiplying both sides by sin 28, X equals uh, 15 over sin 7 times sin 28, which is 57.783. So, um, we know what this length here is now. So now just looking at the right angle BDC, we are now able to work out the height of the chimney DC. So we can say that sin 35 equals opposite the height of our chimney DC, divided by the hypotenuse that we've just worked out to be 57.783 and that gives us DC being 33.143 meters so 33.1 meters to one decimal place. Now part B as far as I can see just seems to be uh, exactly the same type of question but you just had to draw the diagram from scratch so we've got this angle being 18 she walks in 25 meters and then the angle then becomes 25 so we're following exactly the same process so we work out this length which I've called y by saying y over sin 18 equals 24 over sin 7 and where did the 7 come from it was just um, 180 take away um, 25 to give us this 155 here and then that's 18 degrees there, 
so that must be 7. So uh, we can work out y to be 60.855, and once we know that length there, looking at this right angle triangle here, we worked out the hypotenuse to be the 60.855. So sin 25 equals the height of this church spire divided by the hypotenuse. So z equals 60.855 times sin 25, which is 25.718, which is 25.7 meters to one decimal place. Now, I wouldn't mind one of you confirming the answers to this. I don't have the answers for these questions, and I'm, I think I've got this right, but I, I, I would welcome one of you just um, uh, emailing through to confirm that you agree with the answer. So the first bit's fine, because we're really just looking at this little right angle triangle over here. We're being asked to work out its height above A, so this length from L1 to A. So we've got a little right angle triangle, so this is easy because we're given that length from A to B is 1450. So, so tan uh, 19 equals opposite over adjacent, so that's X over 1450. Uh, so multiply both sides by the 1450. X equals 1450 tan 19, which is 499.275 or 499.3 meters to one decimal place. Now, for part B, I'm finding it harder to get my mind around it. So what I'm trying to do is to get a, um, a bird's eye view of what's going on. So looking down from above. So we're told that C is due south of A. So C is below A and that B is northeast of A. So that's going off at 45 degree angle from the horizontal. So I can therefore work out that that total angle there must be 90 degree right angle plus 45, which is uh, 135. And I've been told in this diagram and from the question that angle ACB was 23. So that allows me to work out that that angle is 22. Now I know the length AB is 1450. So using the sine rule, I can say the length BC, which I'm calling Y for now. So Y over sin 135. I don't know why I've said 1350 there. I mean 135. Let's just knock out that uh, zero then, that's annoying. All right, so let's just take out that little zero. There we go. So y over sin 1350, we'll get back onto pen. So y over sin 1350 equals the 1450 over sin 23. There's our pair. We don't know why, but we do know this angle. So that allows us to work out the length y, the length from b to c, to be 2624.067. Now they're asking us to work out the angle of elevation of the aircraft from b, from b, when at L2. Now at L2, it is it is straight over c, and because it's flying at a constant height, the the height when it's at L1 above a must be the same as the height L2 when it's above C. So the length from uh, L2 to C, the height from L2 to C, must be the same as we worked out in part A of the question, being 499.275. So I now think, if I just go and look at it sort of sideways on, so there's the base going from B to C, there's the plane flying over C, we know that that length, we've just worked out that length, so I think the angle of elevation uh, theta so tan theta equals opposite over adjacent allowing me to work out theta to be 10.8 degrees then we're finally we're being asked to work out the area of the triangle abc well that's not too bad i know this side here is 1450 i've just worked out this length here to be 2624.067 so if i use the angle in between as my angle c for the formula and that's easy to work out because that's just 180, take away 23, take away 135 to be 22. So there's my length, 1450. There's my other length, 2624. The angle in between is 22. So using half AB sin C is half times 1450 times 2624.067 times sin 22 gives me 712,669.78 which let's say to one decimal place is 712, 669.8 meters squared. So again, if any of you um, disagree with this answer or can, can tell me that you do agree, that, that would be good to know. So good luck with those five questions. I think some of them are quite challenging. Um, it's about that we're good, that I think if you can do those, you know, that's a good signing off for all the trick questions.